So we've seen text-to-video models come from a number of different angles. We've seen the open source side with stability AI and stable video. We've seen runway ML. We've also seen players out of left field like Pika that are basically competing with the likes of runway ML right now. And today what's insane is OpenAI just released Sora, which is their first text-to-video model. So is it good? What did I think this was initially when I saw it on Twitter? Uh, should you use it and how can you use it right now? I'm going to cover all of that in this video, so welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So this new model is called Sora, and it can make videos up to 60 seconds long, and OpenAI describes this as creating videos that are highly detailed, that can contain complex camera motion, multiple characters or subjects, and with something they're calling vibrant emotions, which I wonder what this means or if it just means that it's evokes emotion because it looks so real, which I guess Midjourney kind of does because it just it knows so much of what humans want to look at. So honestly, when I first saw this, I thought this was potentially a 3D Nerf rendering. Um, a lot of this I've seen kind of come from Nerf Studio, and this is completely wild. So given how good this video is, I actually thought it was a joke. It was that good. And this prompt here is actually pretty long too, so there's a lot of context being baked in here. So it says, beautiful snowy Tokyo city is bustling. The camera moves through the bustling city street following several people, so it's tracking a subject kind of like a drone would. Several people enjoying the beautiful snowy weather and shopping at nearby stalls. Gorgeous Sakura petals, so another specific reference, are flying through the wind with snowflakes. And all of that's in here, and the depth and realism and lack of distortion is completely insane. Like, I com I mean that, I know I say that a lot in these videos, but I genuinely mean that here. They also say, of course, with everything OpenAI does, that they'll be taking important steps to make sure it's really safe to use before Sora is available in all of OpenAI's products. They're working with red teamers to understand how they could create things that people would maybe not want to see with this. And here are some other videos. So this is more of what I would expect from Pika. A lot of these models kind of cheat by slowing down the frame rate and having these kind of godlike slow motion scenes. Here, there's a lot of particle effects going on, so it's struggling a bit, but it still looks really realistic. And you can tell as these mammoths get closer to the camera, there is more detail. You can see there's more kind of furry hair around their ears. And also, multi-subjects again, which is a really hard thing for these models to do. So this prompt is several giant woolly mammoths approach treading through a snowy meadow. Their long woolly fur lightly blows in the wind as they walk. Snow-covered trees in the distance and wispy clouds. And I think this might mean what they mean by emotion, so kind of an aesthetic or a style of camera jitter. So here, this is a movie trailer featuring the adventures of 30-year-old spaceman wearing a red wool knitted motorcycle helmet Blue sky, salt desert, cinematic style, shot on 35 millimeter film, vivid colors. And this is pretty cool. Like, I never would think you could get something this good looking out of Runway. Runway just had their Runway 48 um, film festival. And even with people really trying to make stuff super realistic, I think it's curious that a lot of my biggest complaints with Runway is that the frame rate just doesn't seem high enough. Pika has gotten close with this because Pika actually supports up to 30 FPS now. But the clarity of this is incredible. Some of the uh, high detailed shots look as good as uh, SDXL being used in stable video or upscaled stable video with an external upscaler. And what's also cool is when they start to mix styles. So this prompt is a gorgeously rendered paper graphed world of coral reef rife with colorful fish and sea creatures. The cool thing here is it perfectly mixes these two styles, and it's one thing that these models are great at, which is creating things that would take artists months or years to make. Uh, not to say we're replacing them, but in terms of prototyping or understanding what something could look like, this is crazy. Uh, this is actually the kind of thing where you're taking something that would have taken months of work as a human or even for a team of humans to do, and having it just happen in minutes. And of course, there was a lot of work going up to this in terms of training the model and a lot of computational power that went into this. You know, who knows how many Taylor Swift flights this is equivalent to in terms of CO2 from compute, but it's, it looks really cool. So, uh, and it's, it's also exciting just to see this much of an advancement where AI video can actually just look like CGI that a high schooler with too much time on their hands got to doing 
uh, you know, after like a year of working at it. So here's another one that's an animated scene. Some of these are easier to do because the constraints are much clearer and it's not trying to create something that is lifelike. Um, that is something that these models have been pretty good at from the beginning, especially Pika. This prompt is an animated scene that features a close-up of a short, fluffy monster kneeling beside a melting red candle. And they say the art style is 3D and realistic, so that's kind of an interesting crossover there. Um, focus on lighting and texture. And here, this might be kind of what they meant with emotion, the mood of the painting is one of wonder and curiosity. So I think what they mean by emotion is emotion applying to subjects and applying to you know, the, the people or um, just the, the number of moving subjects in the video. Here is another kind of city prompt. So a stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm, glowing, neon, and animated city signage. She wears a black leather jacket, a long red dress, black boots. So a lot of specific character elements. And uh, I, I think what also plays into this is something that Runway ML has struggled with is the notion of character complexity and character cohesion throughout multiple generations. There are actually some specific models or fine tunes of stabled video that deliberately focus on this. So clearly OpenAI has also just completely nailed this. And if you look at this, one thing that I think is really impressive is just look at the reflection on the road from the water. Like that, that is incredible. Uh, that's something that without ray tracing we thought two years ago would have been completely impossible. Funny tweet from Avi here. Uh, he, I'm reviewing their, uh, their hardware tab, which I think is way better than Humane AI and the rabbit. But yeah, this is completely insane. Uh, hopefully we start to see some other people who have private access to this posting on Twitter about you know what this is gonna look like. Uh, this is a massive advancement for OpenAI. And I think if anything, it's the only reason you should still have a GPT-4 account in any case. Um, so this is incredible. This is by far the most advanced text-to-video modeling uh, I have ever seen. I do believe these are real. I have no reason right now to believe these are fake. And since it's coming from the original OpenAI account that's verified on X, yeah, this is pretty cool. So we're limited to 60 seconds. The frame rate looks pretty high. So I'm saying, I, I would think this is at least 24 frames per second. The ability to do volumetric particle effects and have something that looks like a nerf in terms of understanding in 3D space what's going on is incredibly cool. And the camera movement and emotion features that they're calling these are, are just insane. So please tell me what you think in the comments below. Um, if you think it's fake, let me know. Uh, this is just the coolest thing I've seen all week. So I hope you learned something in this video. I know it was kind of short, but I wanted to get this out as soon as possible. Um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video.